this video, we will talk about categories. Categories basically determine the structure of your shop. All of the shop's individual sites are placed in the categories and ordered within them. Let's go through the categories menu. You can find it at Catalogs, Categories. On the left hand side, you can see the category structure separated by categories themselves and landing pages. You can expand and collapse these lists with the arrow button shown here. As you can see, currently we have no landing page. We will create one in a later video though. For now, let's start with our category structure. We can see the shop's root category as well as another arrow button which serves the same function as before. It expands and collapses an overview of the category tree and shows the various subcategories and general structure we created for it. The root category is used as an entry point for the main navigation in most sales channels. This also makes it so that, by default, all the subcategories of that entry point are displayed in the storefront. This button here expands an options menu. You can do various things like creating new subcategories, editing existing ones or deleting them. Let us create a new category and see how it works. We'll give it a name and press enter. You'll notice that Shopware immediately after repeats the process, allowing you to create another subcategory. This is an ease of use feature because when you're initially setting up your shop structure, you will most likely be creating numerous categories. If you don't actually want to create another subcategory, simply press escape or click the cancel button. Let's select our newly created category and see what we can do in there simply by clicking on it. In the general tab, you can see the basic settings. You have the category's name, of course, can enter text for it and determine what kind of category type it is. It is also worth noting that newly created categories are by default set and active. Tags are not visible for your customers in the storefront. Their purpose is to aid in the organization of other features in the admin panel. For example, we could assign the tag fragile to the category, indicating that all products assigned here are fragile. Later on, in the shipping methods, we could use the rule builder to only offer special shipping methods for categories tagged with that keyword. Category type lets us select from three options. Page list is the commonly used type for the shop's actual pages in the front end, like landing pages or product listing pages. The structuring element entry point is meant for internal organization. Categories of this type do not allow you to assign products, layouts or SEO options, like other categories, as a result. Finally, there's the link type. Its purpose is to provide a link to another page. This works for sites on your shop as well as an ex external site. For example, you could link to a manufacturer of yours with this type. We're going to create a standard category for this exercise though. As such, we're deciding on the page list type. Next up, we got the opportunity to choose an entry point. Here, we define at which point in navigation the category can be reached. Main navigation means below the shop's logo in the upper part of the storefront. The footer navigation is located in the lower area of your storefront and the service navigation menu is located in the upper right part in the form of a drop-down menu. After that, we'll select which sales channels we want those settings to apply to. It's worth noting that you can select multiple sales channels for this. Configure Home allows us to select this category as a starting point for specific sales channels, thereby skipping categories above it in the hierarchy. Since we want to create a normal category with displayed content, we're going to delete those settings again. Now we arrive at the menu settings. Clicking Hide in Navigation will do exactly that. Hide the category from the navigation. The display image is shown in the navigation's drop-down menu. It can, however, also be automatically integrated into a shopping experiences page with the data assignment function. Here we can add the description for the category. Let's have a look at the other tabs. First, we've got the Products tab. This is where you can assign products to the category. We have two ways to go about this. Manual selection lets us select which products are listed in this category by hand. Dynamic product group allows us to determine that we'd like the category's product listing to be automatically generated based on various factors. There is a dedicated video for this menu. 
So if you're wondering about this feature, be sure to watch that video as well. For simplicity's sake, we'll go with the manual select and appoint a few products in the drop-down menu. We can, of course, also remove products from this category again, with the menu shown here by clicking Remove Association. Like this. Next up, we have the Layout tab. In this tab, you can select or edit a shopping experience that governs the category's appearance in the storefront. After a layout is chosen, all sections of the selected shopping experience are visible here. You can edit how those sections affect this category's appearance from this menu as well. The options shown here depend on what sections the selected shopping experience provides. Finally, we have the Search Engine Optimization tab. In this menu, you can add and edit metadata, which is relevant for the various search engines. Naturally, we have the meta title and description, along with keywords, which the search engine takes into consideration when indexing the category's site. Last but not least, we can also define a category's SEO URL for each sales channel. And this concludes the user training for categories.